Good day, my brothers. Good day, and welcome to the Kingdom Men in Action podcast. My name is James Parker, and blessings to you, and thank you for joining me today. I want to want to use this episode today to talk about commitment. That word can be challenging. Commitment. It means so many things to so many people sometimes. But when we commit, what are we actually saying? What are we doing? Especially when it comes to the kingdom of God. Are we fully committed? Are we truly committed? Are we just saying we're committed? But our actions show something else. We really need to take heart to that word. Commitment. Because God is needing our commitment. He needs our commitment 24-7. Not sometimes. Not when it's convenient. When it comes to the kingdom of God. We're we're there. We're committed. 24-7. It's like a fireman on duty. When that bell rings, ding, 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 ding. We throw on our clothes and we go. We go to wherever we're needed. And so, as men, we really need to think about, you know, what are we committed to? Are we committed to God's word and how we should be doing in his kingdom? Or are we committed to the next football game? Because I'm going to tell you, out of all the sports, NFL football is my thing. And nowhere would I rather be on Sunday afternoon, kicked up after church, kicked up comfortable clothing, and I'm watching a couple of good games on that afternoon. But, uh. What if uh, Sister Donna calls and she's in need of some assistance? Do I tell her I'm not available? Or am I following God's word that we are to take care of one another? We are supposed to love one another. However that may be. Again, are we committed? So, I want to read something out of Second Chronicles. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the reign of the King Asa, I believe. Yes, this is his reign. And so, Second Chronicles, uh, right around Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 10, I'll be reading. So, it reads as thus. They assembled at Jerusalem. Well, you know, first, let me let me say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity. And I thank you for the men that have uh, downloaded or, or joined this episode. And uh, I pray that a word that will come out uh, will help motivate, educate, help us to grow, help us to be better men. Your word does all that. Your presence does all that. And. Our desire, Lord, is to serve you the best that we can. That's what we want to do as as men in your kingdom. As kingdom men, we want to serve you, Lord. So we just thank you for being here, uh, to be able to, uh, to be in your word. And we pray that we leave here a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So Second Chronicles 15... Verse 10 says, they assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the 15th year of Asa's reign. At that time, they sacrificed to the Lord 700 head of cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder they had brought back. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. All who who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, will be put to death. 
whether small or great, man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud application, with shouting and with trumpets and horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God, God eagerly, and he was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. So here, these people wanted to seek Lord wholeheartedly, that they was willing to make a covenant, a commitment that they will seek the Lord. And this is who they would seek. And those that were not willing to make that commitment, they was going to kill them, put to death, men or women, big or small. They was going, they was gone. You don't want to commit to the Lord, you're out of here. You're not going to be around. Um, of course, it was out of the Old, Tep Old Testament. And so, you know. But that's just showing their commitment, what they was willing to do. And so as men... I think once we have made that determination that we're going to be committed to God, uh, you know, we have to, we have to, we have to honor that. I mean, we're, we're committing ourselves to God and we have to honor that to where we need to be where we need to be when we need to be there. <laughs> In other words, um, if you're needed somewhere or is there something needed to be done in the kingdom, make it happen. Uh, I know I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of, uh, I don't know what it's, word I'm looking for, but I know from my brothers at my church, uh, they'll tell me, you know, don't do too much. Um, try not to do it all. And I and I hear what they're saying, and I mean they just don't want me to be burnt out, and I really appreciate them for that. That's that's one of the things about when you're with other Christian brothers that they're they're looking out for you. Their your your well being is on their heart that they don't want you to burn out. And you know I'm at a place though I'm just trying to do everything because I feel like I've wasted so much time. And I've come to realize, though, that in his word, it says that God will meet you where you at and God will restore the time that you have lost. And so he will do that. And so I'm better now. But when starting out, I just, you know, I try to do everything. But I mean, that's where my, that's where my heart is. I, my heart is to to be here for the kingdom. Uh, when you serve at a, uh, at your local church, you know. Are you serving at your local church or are you just going through the motions? You see, so once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we've committed our sins and the Lord now has wiped the slate clean. And through Jesus Christ, we can now have that relationship with God and, and, and reconcile with him and be with him. Um, you know. Are we, uh, is that all just in words or it is now that we're now at that place in life, are we willing to commit and show just, just what we're willing to do? So let's take Sunday. When we say we're committed, let's take Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning rolls around. Are we getting up, getting the family up together, getting them situated? Getting everybody fed and getting them to Sunday school and church on time. You know, are we being that leader committed to making sure that our family is, is participating in those things that, you know, God wants us to do, be a part of a church body and to be edified and, and, and learn and grow in his word? Or are you just too tired and lazy and you, you know, the wife is getting up and you let her get the kids up. You let them go on to Sunday school and church while you you stay at home, you know, great example. But we do have men that do that. They let the wife take the lead when it should be them. And again, like I said, some stuff we're going to talk about, you know, it, I want you to think about it. Don't get offended. Don't get upset. Talking about, um, you know, what am I I'm just letting you know, um, we have to take the lead. We have to set the example. The men have to be the forefront. That's what we're here for. That's what God has us here for. He made Adam first. 
And even in the Garden of Eden, we blew it. We blew it. God gave us instructions, and we stood right there and, and, and watched the serpent manipulate Eve, and now here we are. God had everything laid out. But it is what it is. God still loves us, and, Scott, and God still made a way to reconcile us to him that through the uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we can still have a relationship with him. So what a good God we serve. But again, our commitment. What is our commitment? You know, I'm just using Sunday. Uh, we'll, we'll, now let's go to work. What kind of commitment do you have at work? Are you going to work? Are you going to work on time? Or when you're at work, do you work? Um, are you minimizing your gossip and inner office conversations? Uh, are you having those conversations for those that have women in their workplace? Are you carrying on conversations with them that you shouldn't be carrying on? You know, these are the things. Are you committed to standing uh, in, 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 in the light of God, standing there? Standing on the front ground. Are you committed to that? Or are you just going with the crowd? I mean, these are things that we deal with on an everyday basis. Uh, just when we're on the road driving. Because um, I was I was definitely uh, uh, guilty of this. I mean, I'm, I'm driving aggressively. I'm blowing my horn. I'm not allowing people to get in. And that's not what God wants us to example to the world. I've gotten a lot better. I've had to work on it. I had my days, but I had to work on it. So I make sure that I leave in plenty of time. Um, I make sure I'm listening to things that are edifying me, whether it be a sermon, uh, praise music, things of that nature. I'm listening to something that keeps me calm, keeps me focused. And I just don't allow the distractive drivers to... Uh, get under my skin so i've gotten a lot better every now and then i might slip but i've gotten a lot better but because i have to be mindful they're watching us the world is watching us men and if we're not setting that example they're going to quick to say you know ah oh, they're just a bunch of whatever you're this you're that um it's not going to bring over those men that they're seeking God, it's in their heart. They want to know what we know. And so we have to example that character and behavior of God that when they look at us and say, wow, he really keeps it under control. Wow, he doesn't get upset like we do or other people do. You know, wow, he's always happy and go lucky. Wow, what, is, you know, what does he have? Because I'm miserable over here. My life is in shambles. I don't have anything going right in my life. But he seems to have everything uh, on point. I need to know what he's doing. And that's when you can open up that door of conversation about our Lord and Savior. But if we're doing the same thing that the world is doing, it's not going to happen. They're just going to consider us one of them and we're just going to move on. Again, that word commitment. What does it mean to you? Just as in your marriage, are you committed to your wife truly? Are you truly committed to making sure that her needs are met and that she's happy? Because I'm going to tell you this, and I'm, this is something that you, you, you might as well get in your DNA or in your skin or however you need to do it. You need to re realize this. Once you have committed to God and you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a servant now. Just like he served when he was on earth for those 33 years and up until he was crucified, those three years they traveled and they was spreading the gospel and the good news. He served. And now that's what you're committed to do. It's not about me no more. It's not about you no more. It's about serving and serving the kingdom. And so your mindset changes. Now, everything that you do, you should be on a servant level. I'm, I need to serve. I answer the phone now, you know, say, uh, when I'm at work, how can I serve you? You know, after I, you know, the name, whatever, whatever. And, you know, you know, how, how can I serve you today? I mean, that's all. That's what it's about now. How can I serve you in whatever capacity it may be? How can I serve you today? Like this, this podcast, how can I serve you? 
And that's uh, uh, how can I serve you? And hopefully I can serve you to get you to uh, seek the word, grow and be better men. That's how hoping how I'm serving you. Not just saying a bunch of words, but hopefully you take these words to heart. That I want to serve you so that we can all grow and be edified. Okay. So, let me read you something from Psalms, Psalms 37, uh, Psalms 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Commitment. Commit your way to the Lord. That means you're a servant, brothers. And and you should be serving your home, your family, community. However you need to however you need to serve. Servant humble heart. And remember it's just not about you anymore. It's about whatever we can do for the kingdom. Because when it's all said and done, it is it's it's all gonna be paid back. When we get to heaven, when we get to eternity, God will reward us. God will that what that that verse that everybody says. Thank you know, welcome my good and faithful servant. Welcome, enter the gates. That's what we're working for. To be honest, nothing on this earth will compare to what we have on the other side. Nothing, nothing on this earth. All the money in the world. All the fame, all the fortune, it gets nothing compared to what we're going to have on the other side of eternity. That's that's our focus, brothers. That's where we're going. So, again, what are you committed to? Are you committed to your children? Ensuring that your children are getting the things that they need in order to be uh, successful out here in the world. Because I tell you, brothers, if you got children... And they're not going to they're not in college yet. You better be preparing them because when they get into college and when they get indoctrinated into whatever school they go to, I'm going to tell you right now, that is the devil's playing ground. That is open season on them to hit them with all kind of mess. These professors out here think they know everything and they, they, they hire them whoever and they start talking about what their views are and all this and you should be viewing this and you should be looking at that. You got to equip your children with the tool that the, 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 the armor, the armor of God. You got to equip them, you know, breastplate of righteousness. You know, and the, the the shield and all that. You have to, you have to, you have to give them that equipment. You have to give them the tools to fight off what they're getting ready to go into when they go to college, because that's where a lot of them get twisted and twisted up and twisted out. But as men, that's that's what we should be doing. That's 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 our job to make sure that they're equipped to handle the world as we know it, which is just a total mess again commitment what are you committed to are you committed to the kingdom of god or are you committed to what the world has to offer it's a simple question with a simple answer either you're committed to the kingdom of god or you're going to be committed to the world there is no gray area there is no there is no sometimes or maybe or so either we're committed to the kingdom of God or we're not but I grant you brothers if we're committed to the kingdom of God we got a lot of work to do and we can get it done because God is on our side the Holy Spirit is within us to do the things that we need to do God is going to give us the strength God's going to give us the courage God's going to give us the wisdom he's going to give us everything that we need out here in this world to defend against the woes that come at us to prepare our family and our children, to do the things we need to do in our communities, to be that uh, helping body in the church and help those church members that need help, those that have been widowed, these those that are most are uh, less fortunate for whatever reason. That that that's what we're there for. So again, are you committed? Put that word in your Bible. Put that word in, in on your on your uh, mirror 
in your bathroom. Write it on a piece of paper. Committed. I'm committed. Write your name. Say, I, whatever your name is, am committed to the kingdom of God. Just put it up there so you see it every day. So you'll see it. One thing that will help us, brothers, that I found, and you've heard this before from people, and it does work because I've done it, is to create a habit, a good habit. Because once you create that good habit, you'll start doing it and you won't even realize it. Case in point, because I had an issue about uh, the garage door. Um, getting the car, I don't get around the corner, don't realize that I, did I let the garage door down? Did I let it down? I don't know. I had to turn around and make sure that the garage door was closed. So after a while, I said, you know what? Let me just hit this button. When I get in the truck, I hit the button. Hit the button, hit the button. Now I do it. It's like I have to do it because I've been doing it for so long now that that's the first thing I do when I get in the truck is I hit that button and I can see the door coming down behind me. So I know when I pull off, that door is closed. That's a habit that I committed to, a habit that I started doing in order to make sure that I have the garage door closed. Another habit. Now, this is a good habit. Another habit, but this is a good habit as far as getting the word in. So a lot of people do this. I've had to make adjustments because of my schedule, but I get up in a, a time enough in the morning that I can at least do um, a devotional and um, I'm doing the Bible lab. I've been doing the Bible lab. I've been doing a Bible lab for the last three years. You know, that 365 day Bible lab. This is another one I'm doing. The, the Bible recap. This is very, very, very good. Uh, I advise you to check it out. Uh, but I, I do that. And then I, I do the uh, daily refresh uh, for those that have the uh, U version app. Don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I, that's what I do in the morning. And then I get ready and go, I go to work. And then I listen through stuff throughout the day. I have uh, my wife got me those uh, those headphones with the um, uh, bone condensing, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it sits on you. It don't sit in your ear. It sits in front of your ear. Anyway, and they're great. I love them. I, I use them at work. And so I listen to different things. Uh, uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, things of that nature. I, I, this is what I listen at work. Uh, I have a church in South Carolina that I follow. So, um you know, constantly trying to put things in me that are going to edify me because nothing the world has to offer is going to uh, help me grow spiritually. And so, again, I'm committed to that. It's a lot of things. And like I was saying in the in the first uh, episode uh, that I had, um, keep seeking for those that are struggling. or so Keep seeking his word. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it, it works because that what was told to me. You keep reading, you keep you keep seeking his word, you read his word, and I'm telling you, something's gonna go off in you, and you're gonna be like, I got it. I hear you, Lord. I got it. I feel you. I feel your spirit. I'm I feel it. And and I and I guarantee you things are just gonna from that point, really things start just you just start you start reading stuff, you hearing stuff, and you're just like I, I you, boy, you just really feel God, you really do, and um, so I, I encourage you. I'll you probably hear me say that because, um, and I'm using a term from uh, the lady that does the Bible recap. She says she always says at the end, you know, because he's where the joy is, and God's where the joy is, and and she's right. I like and when I first heard that, I was like, wow. It just made me smile. And so now I say it. So I'll probably be saying it on this a lot, too, because he is. God is where the joy is. If you're miserable in your life, if you're not happy the way your life is gone, if you're not happy the way life is going, God is where the joy is. And I can't make it no plainer than that. So, brothers, let's get on board. Let's do this. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing called being a disciple. And then let's let's do this thing. Let's make disciples like he's instructed us to do. Don't get all wrapped up in God's word to where you're trying to analyze and be all analytical and all this other stuff. God's word is God's word. Just read it. Read it and digest it. If it don't make no sense, come back to it. But just read it and just do what it says. Don't add to it. Don't take away. Just do what it says. Just do. And I guarantee you you see your life a whole lot better. We just need to do what God has said, has set us out to do. That's it. No more, no less. I ain't adding nothing else to it. And I ain't taking nothing away. Just do what he says. And that's be a servant. The servant to the Lord. That's what we are. 
So remember, commitment. That's our word for the day, commitment. So, all right, brothers, I hope that this has been encouraging. I hope it's been uplifting. I hope that it got something out of this episode today. But just remember, brothers, I love you. I love all of you, and I and I pray for uh, success for every one of you that's listening and for the ones that are not listening. I, I pray for all men. I want all men to get on board. I want all men to take their place. I want all men to lead their families down that righteous road, to be committed to their church and to their community. Help those that need to be helped. Instruct those that need to be instructed. Let's stop our young men from being arrested. Let's stop our young men from, you know, at 14 years old to shoot and kill somebody at 14. I don't understand. I don't want to hear about another uh, mass shooting because that's we're having mass shooting because we're not instructing our children because our children shouldn't have that kind of heart that they want to go out and, and harm and kill at 10 and 13 14 15 years old you know if kids are bullying in school you you always have kids that kind of tease on the weaker ones or whatever but if it's to the point where it's making another kid want to kill himself then we're not doing what we need to be doing and that means that need that means we need to get involved we need to get involved we need to be right there in the forefront and we need to make sure that our children are protected that's what we need to do we shouldn't be hearing about another child being killed shot murdered suicide anything that's why we need to be doing because it's enough of us to put a stop to it and i and i know with god on our side it can be done i mean people probably say oh no it can be done god is all powerful god can do it all there's the only thing god can't do is fail that's the only thing he can't fail so i know we can stop all this and make this world right so again commitment and a matter of fact, this in 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 the end on this note. Well, let me say this because this is about commitment. So it, this is like with our leaders, our leaders in government, state, city, whatever government level you at. These leaders, if you are true men of God, the decision that y'all make would be decisions made that would benefit the masses. I don't know what decisions government is making, but it ain't helping nobody. And if you notice, they don't fix nothing. All they do is just put a Band-Aid on it. They don't fix the issues and the problems that need to be fixed. But if they're true men of God and they believe in the Lord, and they believe the words that they read out of the Bible, they will make the decisions that will fix what's going on here in the world, whether it's local uh, or statewide or, or, or United States-wide, however you want to do it, federal government-wide, whatever, our congressmen and, and whatnot, don't sit here and talk about I'm for God and country and you're making these backdoor deals that's not going to fit anybody. Don't do it. If you're truly committed to the Lord, that word committed, commitment, are you committed to the Lord and his word? I mean, there's there's chapters in his book, especially in the Old Testament, on how government is supposed to be run and how we're supposed to be taking care of our widows and orphans and things of that nature. It, it's all in his book on how we should be doing. We're not doing it. Because if we was, we wouldn't have all the problems that we're having. Everybody would be happy. The world would be happy. We wouldn't have nobody around here robbing and killing and things. We had God's word in our hearts and we were doing what God told us to do in his word. We wouldn't be having no problems. So, that's how I see it. Again, what are we committed to? Just saying, write it on a piece of paper, put it up on your wall that I am committed to the kingdom of God. And that, and we'll and we'll take it from there. So. All right. So that's it. I think that's enough for today. I don't want to run this long because I don't want you to lose it, lose your attention span. You know, I want you to take what I had to say and digest it. Let it run around your head for a little bit, you know, and then put it put it to the test. That's all I can tell you. So but I thank you for joining. I thank you for being a part of this episode. Again, like it, like this uh episode, hit the like button, share this with other men, share it with your community of men at your church. Um, let's all 
make this a part. Let's because it's gonna take all of us. It ain't gonna, it's just not me. It's gonna take all of us. And 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 with the Lord uh, on our side and through the Holy Spirit guiding us, uh, we can make we can make big strides. So that's what I want. But anyway, y'all have a good day, and I pray all is well. And dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time and this opportunity to come together as men. Uh, we ask that uh, whatever was said or heard that it would uh, edify them and also help them on their journey. Uh, this is a journey that never ends. It is this continuous journey. We just only get better as we learn and seek you, Lord. Uh, we get better. We get stronger. We get wiser. And uh, we're able to carry out your orders as in your word as we move forward so we thank you for everything lord lord I ask you to bless those that are struggling those that might have lost loved ones during this time lord be with those families to give them peace and comfort and i ask all this in the precious name of jesus amen all right brothers have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode and remember god is where the joy is